Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome to the inside of my 98 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Today I'm going to start a job that, to be quite honest, I have absolutely been dreading it. And one of the reasons I dread this kind of job is because A, I suck at it, and B, I hate it. So, and that job is this here. This is the climate control and the mode door no longer switches properly. Now, before any of you pop in and say, oh, it's the vacuum hose. No, it's not. This is the electronic climate control. There are no vacuum hoses to it. Now, there is also a test you can go through on these where you can put this in a certain mode and it'll go through diagnostics. And as far as it's concerned, the head unit is functioning correctly. It shows it switching. The problem is the doors aren't switching. So one of a number of things is happening. Either the door is trying to change and it's stuck and I can't hear or see any kind of attempt at change. I can get my little inspection camera, not little, but I can get my inspection camera down to where I believe that door is and I can make that change and I see no movement or attempt at movement at all. So either voltage isn't being sent or the motor is bad or it's trying to move and can't and I just can't see it. So since I don't fit under dashboards, I'm just going to have to start pulling parts until I can get enough of a reach at that motor that I can get some testing done to it. So I'm going to start just by pulling all of this stuff, as much of this stuff off as I can. And while I'm at it, I'm going to get this stupid information center out of here because it hasn't worked correctly in years. And also the um, radio antenna cable is broken somewhere along the way. And I put a, one of these up here in it in, and it doesn't work worth a crap. So I need to get in and get that done too while I have this apart. Okay, these covers here weren't all that hard to get off. Buttload of screws and a few clips. Thankfully, far more screws than clips. But um, I believe this here is the motor. Not the motor, but the door that doesn't move. So I'm going from dash vents to dash vents and feet. Then I'm going just to feet. Then I'm going to feet and defrost. Then I'm going to defrost and then the auto. And it does not move in any position. So I'm seriously hoping that this thing is pulled about as far apart as I'm going to need to. This is the head unit. It's got 22 wires going into that head unit. All to operate a couple of door motors. Okay, now that I got it apart to where I can see things a little better, I would like to run through all these self-diagnostic tests and see if everything comes back as working correctly again. All right, so depress the AC and recirc buttons and turn the knob one click clockwise. Did it say clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise, okay, so we're gonna press this and we're gonna turn that. Now we're, in, now we're in test selector mode or diagnostic mode. Fault code test. Fault codes are two digit numbers that identify, okay. Current fault codes. Retrieving fault codes. To begin fault code test, you must be in the selected select test mode with zero zero displayed and no stick band push either the AC or recirc button. Okay, there's AC. The stick man will appear indicating you have entered the fault code tests. The values displayed in the test selector will range from 00 to 64. Fault codes will appear and repeat if there are more than one. Then see the current and historical fault code charts for the descriptions. If a fault code 25 or 29 is displayed, the ATC control module must be replaced before any further testing is performed. Well, I'm only seeing 21. What's 21? 21, door travel range to small mode door feedback circuit. Well, no shit. The mode door is not traveling. I've managed to find a wiring diagram of this Rube Goldberg device. 
Nothing like 16 circuits and 47 wires to take the place of three cables, but nonetheless, it's what we got. This is the mode door actuator. These three wires are just for the, the position sensor that senses what position it's in. So they're power, ground, and the actual sense, sense wire itself. These two wires are for the motor. Now, if I'm reading this right, and I used to do this all the time when I was much younger, I left the automotive business about the time this vehicle was made. If I'm reading this correctly, this is the motor. I got two wires, dark green and tan and black. Okay, I know it's nearly impossible to see, but there is my five bolts at the sensor. So I'm gonna leave the center one on ground, and I'm gonna move this one over to the dark green and brown, which is one of the motors. If I can get it to do it. There we go. That's now in dark green and brown. So when I move that, this selector, when I move this selector here, I should get see voltage it there if I'm thinking if I'm thinking that I figured out how this works there's in the off position there half a volt two volt two tenths of a volt two volts one volt two volts it's eight volts so when I switch it to defrost, it jumps up to eight volts for a second. Boy, I tell you, contorting myself into these positions has not done me a bit of good. Every time I stoop down, I get cramps in one leg or the other. I've smacked my head multiple times and set my forehead to bleeding. It's just been loads of fun. Still not seeing any movement at all of that lever defrost eight volts when I switch to defrost and then it quits like it's trying to change it then fails panel defrost doesn't do anything one volt whatever let's swap positions of that one wire to the other motor controller position the um, dark green motor position see if that makes a difference that is just so hard to get to and see. All right, there we go. So we're in the off position. What's going on? Here we go. This is floor and defrost. <laughs> That's defrost. And then auto. There's eight volts again. That time when I went to panel, and it stays on eight for a few seconds, but it doesn't change. So I'm thinking that's probably enough voltage to control this. So I'm blaming the motor. So I've had a heck of a time figuring out what that motor actually is. I finally got a parts guy at a Jeep dealership on the phone that was willing to take some time to help me. And he couldn't tell that what that motor is either. Uh, so he sent me this. This is... The 98ZJ with my VIN number and air conditioning with the ATC, the automatic temperature control. Now this, you're looking at this from the firewall side. So it's rotated 180 degrees that way from the way I'm looking at it or you're looking at it on camera. This is the part here, part number 40. That's the motor there. That's the mode motor. That's the blend door motor, and this up here is the recirc motor. So that part number 40 is actuator heater, and the part number is 04720569. Why they list it three times, I don't know, but it's the same part number. One doesn't have a part number at all, and one has two part numbers both being the same. That part is unobtainium. Jeep dealerships don't have it. Dorman doesn't make it. I can't even find a used one on eBay. 
all of the overstock and outer stock Mopar parts places don't have one. It can't be gotten. So, it might be possible a later one could be adapted to it, but that's going to be impossible to do with the heater box in the car, and I'm not pulling the heater box out. I did what I swore I wasn't going to do and forced it. I grabbed this with a big pair of channel locks and twisted, and something went pop. Oh, look, I can move it by hand. That right there, that's my panel position. This right here is defrost and floor. Oh, look, you know what I can do? I'm going to unplug that fucking motor. Sorry. Sorry for my French. And I'm just going to put some kind of lever on here that sticks out to there that I can move with my hand. So I know you're all going to call me a hack. So I'm going to beat you to it by calling myself a hack. Since that motor cannot be had, even if I could figure out a way to get it out of there without pulling the engine and transmission and cutting the hole through the floor, um, I can't even get the motor even if I wanted to. So since I twisted that and broke something, I am um, took a piece of coat hanger, wire coat hanger. When my last wire coat hanger is gone, just shoot me because my life will be over. Um, I took a piece of wire coat hanger, put a full loop in it, put it between those two levers there, punched the hole here, brought it out here, and now I can switch from defrost and heat to um, front panel. And I'll punch a hole in whatever is out here, and I'll put a little handle on that, and put this thing back together. Okay, I think I'm going to have to call a halt to this job for a little while. Not only have I cut my head all up, trying to get it jammed up in there, and tweaked my neck, but I was had my ribs laying here on the side as I was trying to get up in there and I bashed my ribs up pretty good. Nothing broken or anything like that, but they're definitely not happy campers. So I am pretty happy with this for right now. Um, the vehicle is drivable and I think I'm going to have to heal up a bit before I can get in and finish it. I also want to fix the antenna, which I now have completely out. Believe it or not, whoever designed this vehicle and I already know they were complete idiots, but they ran the antenna cable behind the heater box. So I can't even get it out. So I'm going to have to, and, and the antenna on this is another unobtainium part. If it was a Cherokee, I could get a replacement antenna. But a Grand Cherokee, it's unobtainium. You can't get it. Yeah, I can find used ones on eBay, but anyway, I'm going to try and repair the old one with a new cable and get it in there. You know, the part that goes out on the fender get it out, repair it, put a new cable in it, and get it in, see if I can get that to work. And I may try reflowing all the solder on that information center and see if I can get that to work correctly again. If not, I think I'm just going to 3D print a block plate or maybe a pocket or something to go in there and um, call that good. But it's going to take me about a week of healing up before I'm willing to do all this. Like I say, it's drivable the way it is now. And... Um, I'll do light work for, for a week till I can get back out here. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this if you have one of these or just enjoyed it as entertainment if you don't. Anyway, talk to you later. Bye for now.